Coming out of Elite, training with Drew Crew in here and clean, knocked out Jarrett Kelson a couple weeks ago. In here to fight Jake the Snake Paul, fighting out of UCTC and with Slammy. Right on, well, uh, I gotta tell you, man, Moody has dropped down. The kid was stacked. He dropped down to get into this middleweight division. Cheating, he's stacked, he's ready to go. <laughs> middleweight, no holds barred, check it out. Two of the tougher middleweights of all time in this show, yeah. Johnny Richie, Jeff Moody and Jake Paul. And you can see right there, both of them are both ornery looking. <laughs> Jeff Moody uh, takes the cake in that department, Mike. This guy, I have a hard time talking to him, man. He scares the hell out of me. <laughs> He's a very, very intense individual at five foot eight, 200 pounds even out of the Magna area. Trains over there with the elite guys. I'm gonna say what I said last time. Look at my eyes. Look at him. Read into him. He can go through these eyes and he deserves to move on, but he's not. Look into my Look eyes, into my Richie. eyes. Hey, I'm not looking into those yeah. things, man. If you can get past his breath, you're all right, man. His, <laughs> his eyes are a piece of cake. Jake the Snake Paul, on the other hand, sweet smelling breath at 5'11", 185 pounds, giving up a little bit of weight here, training with Slammy, filling the boys. I've been around a while. I've fought some tough guys. Uh, I've won in the finals before, so uh, yeah, it's a big honor to to get the call to fight in the round of champions. So uh, I'm here and I'm ready to do it. I'm better than them. He's better than him, except that, don't look into his that, eyes. That, that's, that's his reasoning why he's going to beat everyone and win the belt, Mike. That's what he told me. He says, hey, I'm just better than everyone. Well, that makes perfect sense here. And uh, Jake the Snake Paul is not one bit intimidated by Jeff Moody, you know, and Jeff Moody's always used that intimidating factor to his advantage. He is a big, strong looking kid, though. He is, Mike. Uh, look at Jeff Moody. We talked about this earlier, too. Look at this guy's arms, Mike. His reach, I wish we had the teletape on his reach. It's got to be about another foot longer than Jake the Snake's on their feet. His arms are almost down to his knees. He looks like an ape. <laughs> they are and so, so <laughs> and, that, and that from across the ring, because normally isn't Jeff Moody doing kickboxing, but because of the fact that we did invite him in the round of champions, he felt it was an honor that he had to step up and well, do this. It was an honor and a challenge, you know, because this, once again, this is a very, very tough weight class with Jake the Snake Paul being at the top of that weight class for how many years now? Yeah. Uh, and, and now Jeff Moody's getting in here with who he's seen dominate the middleweight division. Well, you know, Jeff Moody, Mike, uh, going to the ground. I'm um, maybe not really sure what to do from this bottom position, but he's got Drew Crew in the corner, and he has worked um, from the, this position before in the past in the gym. And let's just see if he got what it, has got what it takes well, to uh, get Jake Paul off of him. He's been over there training with Jeremy Horn at Elite, and so he's not a stranger to the ground. While, you know, kickboxing is where he got his background, he's been doing a lot of jiu-jitsu for the last six, eight months, and you see there he's working a nice guard, uh, trying to work for a reversal, but, boy, it's hard to do when Jake the Snake Paul's got you pressed up against the cage there and pounding away at you. Well, yeah, throwing down elbows, Mike, you know, trying to get this thing ended early. Last time he fought Justin Wright a few rounds ago, and Justin Wright hit him with an elbow and split him open and ended the fight early. Maybe he's taking a lesson out of his book saying, I think I'm going to hit you with my elbow and maybe get this thing over with in the first well, round. Well, that's something I've seen him working on in the gym there with the Slam 8 group. They uh, get the pads on the ground, and they, they post up and drop elbows. They've been doing a lot of that. And, Johnny, that's one quick way to, to end a fight. You don't have to knock somebody out, but if you slice them open with a point of your elbow, uh, those cuts will end a fight quickly. Well, and you see, he's not really trying to work to get out of the guard, Mike. He's not really looking to sit up and, 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 and get out of his out of his guard because he's doing a pretty good job of pinning him against the cage and hurting him from here. Well, I think the reason he's not doing that is while Jeff Moody may have a pretty decent guard from a uh, defensive standpoint, it takes time to get good offensively with the guard. Sure. And, and so you can see Jeff Moody with his feet crossed there and looks like he's just kind of fighting defensively, holding his opponent in tight to avoid getting hit with any big major shot but I don't see him trying to climb the body or look for a submission or anything like that. Well, Mike, with only about 13 seconds left in this fight, it looks like to me as Jake Paul's really controlled the action this far. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think you'd have to unquestionably give it to uh, Jake Paul the first round there, but uh, he won a 10-8 round, or excuse me, a 10-9 round. Uh, we'll see if he can come back and improve on that or if Jeff Moody can make the adjustments he needs to make when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you're just joining us, you're missing a pretty good fight here with Jeff Moody making the transition into the NHB arena here to join us in the uh, uh, round of champions. But he's going up against a very tough Jake the Snake Paul, who uh, really, in both of our opinions, won that first round. Well, Mike, let's kind of explain a little bit about the round of champions, too, as we talk about this fight. It's the fact that we're getting the toughest of the toughest in each weight class 
uh, in the tournament in a bracket style format where these guys will fight each other to eventually make it to the Delta Center and they're fighting for a state sanctioned Utah uh, belt, championship belt. Well, yeah, you mentioned that, that we we're taking the toughest of uh, the toughest in the weight class. And, you know, we couldn't really say that about the middleweight division without inviting Jeff Moody. And Jeff yeah. Moody's not even an NHB fighter. No. That's how good he is. Well, Mike, and, and, he's, and he's learning. You know, that's the thing about Jeff Moody that makes him dangerous is we know how dangerous he is on his feet. Jake's Paul told me, I want to take him to the ground. I want to just really, I don't want to stay in his world. And Jeff Moody's getting better at the ground. And so eventually he's going to catch up to where these guys are currently at. Keep in mind, this is not Jeff Moody's first foray into the NHB ranks. He has done it before and done rather well. So it's not a matter of him coming as a, as a complete novice. He's a good fighter, and he's got the heaviest hands in the business, Johnny. Yeah. He can knock a lot of middleweights out. Unfortunately, Jake Paul's been taking him down to the ground, not giving him that opportunity. Yeah, not giving him that opportunity. And and you can see right here that, once again, Jake is sitting inside the garden, and Jeff does have his legs crossed. And I know that Jeremy Horn's not too happy with that. I think I heard him screaming that he wants him to really work up the body and look for submission. Or, or look just to get a reversal and get the heck out of there. You know, it, it can be frustrating. You're learning how to work a guard in the in the room back in, in practice, but people aren't really punching you there. No, no. Especially, you know, look at a neck crank attempt here by Jake Paul. But, but Jake Paul really knows how to fight from within the guard, and he's not mm -hmm. uh, going to just give you an easy escape or an easy uh, submission from within, the, the, his, from within your guard. Well, Mike, I've heard that people say that, you know what, you can go walk in there with the best game plan of all, but you get one shot to the nose and it flies right out the window. And Jeff Mooney has knocked the, that uh, game plan out of many uh, noses, but now <laughs> finds himself on the bottom side here. And really, it looks like he's just kind of frustrated down there. He, he wants to punch. He wants to hit, but he, he can't do that uh, from underneath. Well, I see John Jordan right there, Mike, looking into the action to see what's going on. And gosh, at some point when they're just kind of not, there's really not a lot of action going on, maybe stand these guys up. As long as Jake Paul continues to strike and continues to press him against the cage, I think you could argue they should let it go. But right here, yes, you see a bit of a stalemate, and, and John Jordan's uh, verbally warning them, if you don't do something more here, uh, I'm, I will stand yet. But you can't really penalize a striker if he's continuing to strike. Sure, okay. Well, right there, Jeff Moody, keeping pretty busy from underneath, too. Every shot that Jake Paul throws, uh, Jeff Moody, Moody throws one uh, to counter it and say, hey, pal, I'm still here. I'm not giving up this easy. Hey, that was a nice left hand <laughs> that uh, Jeff Moody threw. And people don't realize this kid can really hit hard, even from his back. He's got a lot of power. Uh, Jeff Moody's one of the stronger kids that, that I've been in the room training with. I had the good fortune of training with him for a couple of years, and he really is a specimen. Well, Mike, with only three seconds left here, once again, Jake Paul ends the round inside the guard of Jeff Moody, throwing elbows. Inside the guard, but very busy inside the guard. He wasn't really just camping out, and that's what you look for. If a guy's just camping out in the guard, you know, he's not putting himself at risk, then, yeah, you got to be looking at the, you know, giving the, the nod to the other guy. But Jake Paul really stayed busy there. He kept throwing punches and elbows, and, and uh, Jeff Moody really didn't do anything. He took a shot there. Yeah, he landed a pretty big shot on JTS right there. I don't think it landed completely flush had it. I think JTS might have taken a little nap, but uh, he landed a couple of near good right hands there on Jake Paul. And look for another one there. <laughs> Swinging for, for the fences, one. baby. Well, I think he knows, Mike. Maybe he's down two rounds. And, and to get this last round, he's really going to have to knock Jake out. Because if he goes to the ground again, Jake's going to do the same thing. Get inside his guard and, and hold him there and punch away. Jeff Moody has fought enough in the ring or in the cage and kickboxing or NHB. He knows when you're down two rounds to nothing <laughs> in a 10-point must system, you've got to really lay it all on the line to even have a chance of having a shot at him. He really did try to really take it to him right there. Mike, who would have thought this guy is a social worker. <laughs> yeah. Show up at this guy's office. He'll knock your teeth out of here, out of line. I'm telling you. You thought you had marriage problems before. before. <laughs> No, but right there, JTS doing what he had to do to get uh, get the takedown on Jeff Moody. But wow, Moody there, Mike, for the first minute, just throwing punches from underneath. And and, and I think he's really had an effect on Jake in this, in this past a little bit. A huge first half part of the round there. But Jake Paul weathered it and was able to get to where he needed to get to get the takedown and secure his position on top. Now Jeff Moody finds himself not only underneath, but now he might have punched himself out as well. Yeah. Uh, he's really in a little bit of trouble here. See, he's trying to work up the body just a little bit. I don't think he has the gas left in the tank. Well, he's not, he's not going to stop throwing punches, that's for sure. Right there, another one that landed on the left side of uh, JTS's face. And 
Oh, there he gets his feet crossed, and, and uh, well, you know, what do you do from this position, I guess? I guess you just let this thing end the way it has, or do you try for a reversal? No, you've got to or continue. do you try for a, a, maybe a near a submission right there? If I were Jeff Moody, I'd just try to get out from underneath. Right. It looks like he's doing that right here. I wouldn't even try a submission. He's not that good at it yet. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when he found that little bit of space right there a moment ago, he should have just ran basically out from underneath his opponent and get away because that's where he has a chance of winning this fight. He's such a good puncher that that, uh, you know, that's his only opportunity to win. Well, you see his cornerman right there, James Birdsley, you know, telling the ref, hey, stand these guys up, because I really think he knows that that's Jeff Moody's only way of, of winning this far, Mike, is just get these guys back up on their feet and let them throw for the fences and try to get a knockout. Yeah, absolutely. Right, We've seen for three rounds here how Jeff Moody's not going to do you a whole lot of damage from here. And really, it's kind of funny that Jake Paul's trying that neck crank from within the guard. You can get that on some guys, but Jeff Moody is just such a tough kid. Yeah. You're not going to neck crank him unless you're on top. Yeah. It, it, it's uncomfortable, but it's not going to submit this kid. He's going to, he's going to, in fact, he's going to punch you for doing it. You know, he doesn't want to get, get your hand off the back of my head, but you know it's not affecting him that much. But what has affected him, Mike, is JTS's ground and pound tactics, slamming him, getting him to the ground, setting inside his guard, and really throwing elbows to finish this fight. Well, as we uh, come to a close of the third round there, you, you nailed it right on the head, Johnny Richie. I think we saw three rounds of pretty much the same thing. And as the, you can see here, the judges agreed with us that uh, Jake the Snake Paul takes his stick one more step closer to the round of champions finals at the Delta Center. This post-fight interview is sponsored by Beehive Bell Bonds because sometimes bad things happen to good people. Hi, right, Jeff. You lost a tough fight tonight. What do you attribute it to? He, he controlled the fight on the ground. Should have opened up my guard and tried to reverse this and stuff. Ask him, though. I mean... Got some shots on him, and his face looks pretty. Uh, well, that goes without saying, Jeff. Trust me, I know he's going to be feeling some soreness tomorrow. Uh, it was a great fight, though. It was a really entertaining fight. I want to say thank you for coming to fight tonight. Tonight you were good, just not good enough. Come back and do it again, man. Hopefully I'm not going to hear that too much, but thanks, Mike. This post-fight interview brought to you by Global Marketing Alliance. They need motivated sales associates looking to make a six-figure income. Call 486-4221. You did it, and you looked very convincingly doing that, you know, because Jeff Moody, that kid on his feet, he'll catch you. And by looking at your face, he caught you a couple times, right? A couple times. He did a good job. But I was able to execute my game plan. I got the W. JTS! Yeah, you got the, you got the W. You move, you're move, Now you're moving on. You won this end of the bracket. Now you're moving on to bigger and better things. What can we expect out of Jake the Snake? The belt, what do you say? What do you think? I'm, I'm hoping for a title shot against Justin Wright. I owe him one. Had a horrible fight against him last time. I want some revenge. That was a big win for Jake Paul and the Slamming team and Phil Henderson. These guys have put a lot into that yeah. kid. And, you know, he, he did the right things today. He won a big fight tonight. Well, hats off to Jake Paul and Jeff Moody. You know, we're not going to see the last of either one of those guys. But Jake the Snake is moving on. He's going to be fighting, you know, to represent, the, the, you know, GMA, Slamming, get the belt. Way to go, Jake. We told you that was main event main material. Event. We got more of it. Don't go anywhere. start that championship bouts Johnny Ritchie and in the light heavyweight division it is stacked. Wow. Drew Ellisor coming out here tonight Mike. Drew Crew representing himself and Team Elite coming out here taking on a pretty tough competitor. You got like two personalities or what? Yeah he's well he's training he's this kid's cross training. Yeah, no, don't they all represent themselves and well, their gym? Well his own gym Drew Crew the, the Drew Crew uh, American Martial Arts. So they've united. So they've kind of united. Yeah, basically he's cross-training at his own gym and Team Elite. Correction, hey, it's for the belt, baby. Light heavyweight, no holds barred, check it out. Who knew they united, Johnny? I didn't know they united. Drew Crew is his gym and he's the Drew Crew. So oh, I didn't get go. the memo, Johnny, I apologize. That's all right, I'll, we'll forgive you this time. But wow. See. Drew Crew. Hey, you know, John, he is definitely deserving to be in the round of champions. Hasn't really fared so well in our show. Uh, because he's ran into the likes of Maniac and so on, but he is a tough kid. Yeah, it's definitely an honor to be in this bracket and uh, I'm fighting with a, just a well-trained group of guys. Um, I've been uh, trading real hard with uh, No Mercy Moody. I'd like to thank him for uh, sponsoring me and helping me out with all my training. I trained with a few guys up at Elite. I'd like to thank Jeremy Horn for, for letting me go in there now and then and train at his gym. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just an honor to, be, to come, come do this bracket and fight in this tournament. What separates me is uh, determination, man. I, I, just, I just don't give up, man. It's, uh, anybody that's ever fought me, they know, they know they have a tough fight on their hands, and it's coming to them. 
Got the toughest eight seconds of their lives coming at them, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> no, but Jared, but uh, Drew Crew, though, man, I got a lot of respect for this guy. He has been around a long time. But Jared Kellum's fairly new into the scene, Mike, but he made a big splash when he first jumped in here. Now, he's really made a name for himself and that whole Mori Academy. Uh, I've seen him fight a few times. Uh, I think we match up pretty well. Um, still, though, in my, my last couple of fights here, I still don't think I've been able to show every quite everything that I've got uh, tonight. I'll try to show a little bit more. Um, but he's a tough kid, you know, I respect him. Uh, but uh, I don't think he'll be able to hang with my hands tonight. Uh, just, uh, I've been fighting, you know, every couple of weeks. Uh, and been training, you know, day in, day out. Um, I train every day to, to get here, so, you know, this is what I do. Uh, and like I said, he might be a little rusty, you know, I don't know, uh, we'll see. Well, he's really thought about it, Johnny. Yeah, he put yeah. a lot of thought into this, and uh, you know you know, he's training hard up at that Morning Academy. I don't think Drew Cruz ever going to come in the ring rusty, though. No, I don't think so either, Mike. I think he knows what he had to do to get in here. The round of champions, come on. You're not going to be getting in here with just some slouch. You're going to be getting in here with probably the toughest guys in each weight class. Well, unless that's rust on the back of his head there. I'm not really <laughs> sure what that is. Hey, that's a Drew Cruz style, man. That thing's grown out a little bit, too. You Looks know, like a big scab. <laughs> <laughs> Not really sure what that is. It's a, it's a hair patch. If he thinks it's going to, if he thinks it's going to, a soul patch on the back. On the back of his head, man. Boy, that feels so good on your. <laughs> anyway. He's going to knock you out. You know, well, I'm just saying, if he thinks that's going to come into style, I just don't see it happening. You never know, Mike. You'd be surprised. Well, we might see Moody coming out with it, but he just caught, wow, right there. He might be beating it into style with Jared Kelton. That was a big right hand. Jared Kelton certainly felt that, and he's on his back here. Johnny, do you think he's going to come back? Um, yeah, you know what I really do? I think Jared Kelton, Mike, he's composed. I think he does have a pretty tough chin. I think, uh, in fact, he might even be looking for a submission here. You never know. Wow, that was a big punch, Johnny Ritchie, and here we were all clowning on uh, Drew Crew. Sore and now Don't say never, we. I'll never do it again. <laughs> you were clowning Those on Those were your jokes. I was just saying them again. Yeah, you said them right. earlier. He already hates me enough. You know what he hates? He hates I. You're good, but just not good enough. Last time I said that to him, he about punched my teeth. Well, don't punch lose me. your fight. We won't say no, it to I'm you. That's what I said. <laughs> okay. that's, what I, that's what I told him. Right there, Drew Crew being warned about standing and striking, and it was just kind of one of those transition things. It didn't look like it was intentional. So uh, Drew says, you know what? I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to stand up and knock you back down again. And, well, and he did apologize, too. He said, hey, man, sorry. And you saw kill. Oh, Jared my Kelton. goodness, oh. man. Again, uh, <laughs> Jared Kelton smiles because he's like, wait a minute. What's and going on here? In his pre-fight interview, he said that he didn't think Drew Crew could handle his hands, but Drew Crew's handling it and then some. Well, I think it kind of that kind of teed him off right there, Mike, and he just uh, crowded Drew against the fence and threw in some punches of his own the last Landed, you know, on Drew. Right and, there. Well, you know, he does have good oh. hands, but he just ate another big right hand that sent him to the canvas. And, boy, he's eating a lot of shots tonight, John. He is a tough, resilient kid. Well, he is. But right there, Drew Koo in a pretty good position. Mike, he's got the side mount. And uh, we've seen him rain down elbows from this position. He's trapping the leg. You see, you know Kelton's going to try to get him into his guard. But right there, tried to trap the arm as well and, and then really start raining down punches. Uh, Kelton is really, really good from his back, though. He's, he's uh, got some good jiu-jitsu training up there with the Mori Academy once again. And you're never safe here. You don't want to leave those arms extended there. Even though you've landed some big punches already, you might be very cautious about being careless here. Well, Drew, smart thing. That's Drew playing the game. Just said, hey, I'm not going to the ground with you, man. Just stand up. Let's do this again. He's already really knocked him down twice. Let's see if he can oh. do it a third time. And Kelton gets a big shot in of his own right there as he grabs a leg and throws a punch simultaneously. Great comeback by Kelton. Johnny, this is going to be one of those rounds that's hard to score. Hard uh, to score. Because it's been very back and forth. Been back and forth. I I think that uh, Jared Kellen did get the takedown right there, but he lands inside the guard. Drew trying to do a somewhat of a guillotine choke. But Drew so Mike have two pretty good knockdowns in the fight. Yeah, without question. You got to give him that first round there. But boy, Jared Kelton is certainly in this one. Uh, looks like a little bit of a cut on the top of the head there of Jared Kelton, just bleeding a little bit there. Not too much for a head wound. No, he doesn't care about that either. He just put a little Vaseline on and be A-OK. -okay. Good to rock and roll. And here we go for round two. And boy, if it's anything like round one, we're going for a treat here, John <laughs> Ritchie. Well, we, if he ran for anything like round one, we know Jared Kell better keep his hands up because Drew Cruz knocked him on his keister twice, and he's looking to knock him out for good this time. And surprisingly enough, he's carrying him a little bit low, uh, which is what, as you mentioned, is an invitation for Drew Cruz to knock you 
Silly. Well, Drew does a pretty good job of throwing that leg kick, Mike, and then coming over the top, and I think that's how he's caught him the past two times. Threw a leg kick at, or, or even to the midsection. Kel stuck his hands out to block it, and he came over the top of that right. Kelton able to get underneath uh, him, get past the punches, but he got left his head underneath there, and Drew Crew trying to put on somewhat of a guillotine from standing here. Um, but, I'm Kel not Kel but Kelton doing a pretty good job of, of uh, not letting him side, have that. Turned absolutely. to the side, threw his arm over, and it put, took a little bit of pressure off by sticking his knee up on Drew's hip, and, and uh, Drew wasn't going to get that choke in him, I don't think. Very nice back and forth action again. And now oh. here, <laughs> you're looking at Jared Kelton, looking at an ankle lock, Johnny, and he's really good at these, as uh, some fighters have already found out. Well, you know, and especially if he can get this thing turned inside nice and hard and can get the roll, he's going to crank on this elbow or on this uh, on this uh, ankle, ankle lock. And I tell you, it, it'll hurt his knee. That'll that'll hurt your knee, Drew, if that's it's, in that spot right there. It hurts all the way from the hip down, my friend, yeah. <laughs> if it's done correctly. And, and right now, Kelton's just going to kind of take a bit of a breather. He knows he's got it on tight. And in a minute here, uh, I'm assuming he's going to really try to explode with it and stretch it out by uh, extending his legs like he is right there. Right there. Well, the only way that Drew Cruz really going to relieve pressure, Mike, is by holding the cage, and you see, you keep seeing John Jordan step over there and say, let go, let go, and he did that, but Drew now did Kelton... a great job, but you see Kelton transitioning to a knee lock, Johnny. Oh, and if he can lock this thing on, this is worse than an arm bar, and we don't see these all too often. Yeah, but Drew Crew is laying the punishment to his midsection oh. there, man. He's really making uh, Kelton pay for uh, an attempted <laughs> arm lock. Boy, right there, Johnny Richard, you can get that over and arch his back. Hey, this is funny because people are looking at this going, what the heck's he doing? But what you don't realize is Kelton's trying to get that leg into a position where he can uh, he can hip into that knee and bend his leg back hyper extended. Oh, then he's transitioned to a T-wrap here, looks like, on the, the other foot. Really doing some nice transition work here, but uh, Drew Crew really making him pay. I guarantee that uh, Kelton's oh. going to be sore tomorrow in the yeah. midsection. He's going to have a hard time breathing, but Drew Crew, Mike, uh, maybe weathering the storm. We've seen a couple fighters do this in that time where they were in a pretty good submission hold, and they just kind of punched their way through it. And well, I think you know, that's Drew's strategy right now. Kelton mentioned in his pre-fight interview that he was going to use some things tonight that we haven't seen before, and he's certainly not disappointing there, doing a great job, uh, John Richie. But yeah, boy, that Drew Crew just toughed his way out of oh, it. Oh, toughed his way through it, Mike. I know a lot of people would have tapped in that ankle lock, but he sat there. Now he's going to try one of his own. An ankle lock of his own he here. Oh, oh, and he gets, gets, gets a tap out of it. Wow. Hey, that shows you how fast that kid learns. I don't even think he knew that in his... I don't <laughs> think he had that in his arsenal. He just picked it up. He just picked it up from Jared Kelton. <laughs> so he knew it hurt on him, yeah, so he gave it, it back you. a piece of his medicine there. Wow, what a big win. Drew Crew really did weather the storm, Johnny. I thought this fight was over for a minute there, but Drew Crew with the uh, scab on the back of his head comes through. Go to ultimatecombat.com's merchandise page to find the hottest mixed martial arts merchandise on the web. You hit him, he hits you, you have the leg lock. He locks the ink lock on to get the win. How do you feel about the fight, man? I just, uh, I got tired at the end. I didn't even try to fight that heel hook. <laughs> well, we think you did a great job tonight, man. Yeah, you come back because you did a hell of a job tonight. Fought a tough kid tonight. You were good, but just not good enough. Thanks for coming out, Jarrett. Thanks. This post-fight interview is sponsored by the Keyhole with their new location at 3460 South Redwood Road. Drew Crew with the bad hairdo. What the hell's going on back there, Drew? Leave it up to Mike to make comment. <laughs> I knew he'd say something about it. Well, I was going to go rest my head on it. It looks so cute. Just messing around. Congratulations. You're moving on, and I can't wait to see a fight. This is a stacked weight class. I don't know who you're going to fight, but you're going to fight somebody tough, I guarantee, in your next bout. Yeah, uh, you'll see me. Hey, I just want to thank uh, people from Rupert Supply coming out, people from Copper Hills. Appreciate all you guys, all my friends and family on the crowd. Love you guys. And your barber. Don't th forget to thank your barber. My barber, myself, thank you. Hi, right, man. Johnny Ritchie, this weight class is stacked. And every one of these fights in this division are going to be like championship bouts all the way up to the finals. It's so exciting, you know, just to be a part of this and to see these guys get in here and do it. I just can't wait to see what happens at Delta Center. So many things could play out. And right there, you saw Druku. I, I thought he was going to tap. He came through it, got, got Kelton in the leg lock, and beats him. And I think that just shows that this weight class and these guys are so well, that's tough. That's the man. irony of it. He was in a, a leg lock the whole time, and then he comes back with a quick leg lock and wins it. Hey, we got more of this stuff. Don't go anywhere. You know, I've read the Constitution, the preamble, and all that stuff, and, the, you know, life, liberty, and the search for blah, blah, blah. But, uh... I think tonight, you know, it's just like, you know, you know, if uh, it's not really a right, you know, that you can get in the cage with me and just walk around me. So I'm going to 
Make sure you're not a bratty American before you get out. Um, my brother's Nick Rossborough. He doesn't fight anymore. Um, taking his place kind of bit. I haven't really trained any except for just playing street fighting just to show that I'm here, you know, see what I can do without training, scare people a bit. Because he doesn't know anything about me. He, like his nickname, he's a kid. I'm a bad boy, so I'll prove to him what it's all about. I like that, Johnny Richie. I've read the Constitution, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, what do you say about a fight like this, Mike? Except, you know, it's uh, one of these ones that ended quick, so we had to cut it down a little bit, right? Uh, we cut down a few of them here. We're going to go in a little highlight format once again. And uh, Travis Chafin, boy, <laughs> the only Chafin he's got is between his legs. Yeah, because yeah. he's not, you know, uh, he hard goes out to the kid. He's a great guy, but Mike, he doesn't belong in the cage. He just doesn't belong in here. Well, he Bottom doesn't line. tonight because uh, the bad boys coming over with a big win right there and stepping in and showing what the Rossboro family's all about. Uh, They'll show you, bratty American pal. <laughs> yeah. Well, you get in here, you get a pretty good win against old Travis. Uh, what's next for you? Are you going to continue to fight and maybe get yourself a championship? Yeah, whoever holds the belt right now, be scared. I'm on my way up. You're on your way up? Yep. All right, you heard it right there. Nice job tonight. You, you did it, man. You're moving on. Right, thanks. You thought that one was quick. This one's even quicker. Sean Hesse and Mike Gates. Uh, I like to stand up. I want to put on a show, so I want to stand up and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody. That's what people like to see. Uh, last week, I ended my fight in a minute and 30 seconds, knocked them out, so plan to do the same thing, ground and pound. Uh, I just got a lot of heart, a lot of pride, and I'm just uh, ready to go. It's my first one, so I'm chomping at the bit. Said he likes to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Johnny Ritchie, but he's going to go toe-to-ceiling -to -toe -to here in a minute. <laughs> Mike, just to clear this up, these are not part of our round of champions. These are actually just exhibition matches. Got to fill on the card. Fill on the card. We're, we're just uh, putting these in here for the fun of it. Well, remember he said he won in 30 seconds last week? Dang. Well, well. He, won in, he won in eight seconds this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, Mike Gates. Wow. In, well, in rodeo, eight seconds is good, but <laughs> in uh, mixed martial arts, it's not so good. It's not so good. <laughs> wow, he gets himself another win. The Mike Gates sweepstakes continues. And, uh, wow, another knockout. Quick what, are you, one. what are you going to say? How, how are you going to top that one? All right, we're over here talking a minute ago, and I heard you say, what happened? <laughs> I've been there, man. I've been there. How do you feel? No, it sucks. Big Mike Gates, the sweepstakes continues. You fight a kid like that, you knock him out in eight seconds, your biggest uh, win to date. How do you feel about the fight? Uh, it felt good. Felt oh, good? Yeah. Man of very few words. Well, uh, John Sharp has no problem speaking, neither does Brian Perrine. It's great to be out here fighting for the championship. Uh, I want to go home and take that lightweight belt with, light belt with me. Dude, I'm, I'm walking through this championship. The belt's mine. I mean, you might as well put John Sharp on the belt because it's going to go on my waist. I told you that kid has no problem talking, no but to problem. clarify, this is part of the round of champions here. We're trying to slam things in here so nobody gets left out, but, uh, you know, John Sharp, he is just getting tougher and tougher, Johnny. Yeah, you know, talking to Steve Sharp, man, over there, everyone over to Absolute MMA, they're saying this guy is the kid to beat. They're having a hard time finding them guys in the gym that can even uh, compare. He's throwing Steve around like a rag doll, Mike. Well, you know, and Brian Perrine has long time been, he's a bit of a journeyman fighter. He's lost, but he's lost to all the top fighters. Well, and he's fought all the top fighters, but he's beaten, uh, he's beaten his fair share of opponents as well. Well, Mike, that's why we felt we had to we had to stick him in this uh, in this individual or you know championship bracket because he has fought the toughest guys, Mike, and he's been around for a long time. And how do you do it without him? And typically, he, he, the, the fights that he's lost, excuse me, he's been very competitive, and he's right there among the upper echelon of fighters in this weight class. But this newcomer, John Sharp, man, I think he's just light years ahead of where he should be for this weight class. Well, he is, Mike, and we. You know, he talked about stepping in this thing, and he talked about fighting for so long that when he finally came in, there was a little bit of hype around him, Mike, but the thing he did is live up to that hype. Well, there were a lot of people that were thinking that it was just talk because he yeah. kept talking for so long, and he didn't fight, and, boy, he didn't have a problem running his mouth back then, but, man, he backs up every word he says, and right now, Brian Perrine's finding that out. He's like, wow, where did this kid come yeah, from? Yeah, where did this kid come from? He said he, he said he knew he was going to fight Sharp, and he thought he was fighting Steve Sharp, and then he found out he was fighting a little brother. He was a bit relieved. A little bit wow, relieved, maybe, yeah, maybe. maybe Maybe not. Uh, not a good thing. <laughs> but right there, it uh, looks like uh, uh, John Sharp getting the best of that that uh, the exchange of punch right there. Bang. Oh, and some and big knees, Two Johnny. big knees, Mike. Those will, will take, take you it, out of your game. Take it out of you. And three knees, four knees. And I think Brian Perrine is just uh, befuddled. He's got Six, seven, man, man. unanswered. I think you got to start looking at stepping in here and stopping the madness because those are unanswered and uh, they're undefended. And, and really, Brian Perrine, I think, 
he's out. I mean, I don't know that he's unconscious, but he's probably he's definitely dazed. Definitely rocked. Yeah, he's not really doing much to defend himself, but he's tapping, time. There's he's a tap tapping right, right there. there. That's Smart it. move. Smart man. move, Brian Perrine. But John Sharp, man. I think that first Woo. knee you saw, Brian Perrine's knees start to buckle, and he just never really uh, recuperated from that. John Sharp shows why he belongs in the round of champions. He says, just go ahead and put my name on the belt, man, and I can see why. Give me the belt. I thought I did okay in a few spots, and then I caught a really good knee to the, the yeah, yeah. chest, and that was... <laughs> and that'll do it. That'll knock the wind out of you right there, and if you don't have any wind, you can't fight. You know, Team Absolute sweeping this. Next round, there's going to be five guys coming out here. That's what I like to hear, brother. Keep them coming. Great job tonight, John Sharp. I hope that I can't wait to see more of you in this round, man. Real quick, thanks to Tippin Nogas and North Soccer. They get me out there running. I can... There's classes out there everybody could take, kids, everything. Get out there. Also, thanks to Rob. Rob's the man, Rob Hanley. Hooks me up, makes me what I am. There thanks you go, brother. Everybody. You gotta thank the people that get you here, man. I love Great it. job, man. Thank you. In the lightweight division, we got a couple of guys that are coming from some of the more proficient, yeah. the more recognizable teams. Team Samurai X and Elite. Who are they, Johnny Ritchie? Well, Matt Hoskins, Mike, we saw this kid came in. He went under the moniker of Tuna, and he slammed, just slammed his opponent and beat on him. He's training with Elite, so he says he's getting better every single day. Well, Jeremy Beckstrom, we've seen him, Mike. He, it's almost a Jeremy Beckstrom sweepstake because he's been fighting week after week out of Team Samurai X, and he's looking better every time he gets in here. This is going to be a hell of a fight. Okay, these guys, two big, big lightweights yeah, big coming lightweight. out here to clash right here in the cage. Lightweight, no old bar. Check it out. John Sharp and Brian Perrine come out here and do their thing. Well, these guys are the, on the other side of the bracket. And Matt Hoskins, they call him the tuna. Ooh. When you look at him, Johnny, he is no tuna. This know. kid is built. I don't know why they call him that, Mike. This kid is a personal trainer. He's physical and he's fit. I think I know why. I've been training with uh, at the Elite uh, Performance Gym, uh, Jeremy Horn's gym. I've been training real hard. We've been uh, working hard on the ground. Uh, I've been working some stand-up. Hopefully be able to get in there, you know, pass somebody's guard. And, It'll cause some damage. I won't quit, man. I'll just keep going until I win. So until the ref stops me. Well, he he eats a lot of sushi, is what I understand. Oh, is that, is that right. why they call him yeah, the tuna? Right. Well, either way. What about Liquid Force, Jeremy Beckstrom, Mike? This is one of those guys from Team Samurai X who uh, he's had a black eye since the start of this whole round. <laughs> you got to be a little bit leery of a guy that walks in with a black eye already. Uh, what got me fighting was uh, Shane. My buddy called and says Shane wants somebody to come and and spar with him and I wrestled a lot in high school so I went over and was working on him and losing some weight and thought hey I'll get in the ring and give it a try but to uh, make it to the finals that'd be awesome if I could get in there and fight with the best that's what we're here for I think. I don't know I haven't seen that much about him I'm not sure if I have much of an edge he's a tough kid I've he's a pretty good fighter so we're just gonna go down there and see what happens. Right there in that cowboy mold there Johnny Ritchie yep. uh, all those guys from down there they're all tough, tough, keep tough guys. Yeah, Mike, they're not, they're not afraid to step in here and fight. You know, he just started training not too long ago. And he, Jeremy Beckstrom has done, done very well for us inside the cage, Mike. Well, you know, it's funny that you, you mention that because all those guys from the Cowboy on, they don't really care who their opponents are. I guess some guys, when we match them up with fights, they want to know what their yeah, astrological get... sign is. Oh! Wow, Jeremy Beckstrom lands a big right hand, sends the tuna to his back. <laughs> but these Cowboys, they don't care who they're fighting. To continue my thought, they just want to get in here and fight. Well, and I'm telling you, he's landing some pretty big <laughs> shots against Tuna. And the last time Tuna fought Mike, he did, well, we see Beckstrom now looking for maybe a gay team, but he does have the arm encircled. And he knows better than that, I think. I just think that it went uh, down yeah. so fast. He just went down and landed in that spot. He's trying to make the best of a bad situation. And, and right now, you want to hold on to this kid, because look how physical he is. Well, he's going to, I mean, what I was going to say about Tuna before, Mike, is the last guy he fought, he picked him up, and he hurled him through the air and just slammed him, and the kid didn't want to fight. He just said, I can't do it anymore. Did you so, see how easily he stood up right there, bearing both his weight and his yeah. opponent's weight? This kid is strong. He is strong. But uh, Jeremy Beckstrom, well, doing a pretty good job, Mike, against this kid, against this powerful opponent in Tuna. Already landed a pretty good shot and almost had him with a guillotine choke. The, my only concern with Beckstrom is his conditioning. We've seen him. He's done very well, but he gets a little bit gassed out. That was a nice little hip throw. There he comes out on top once again. Uh, this Beckstrom kid is really impressing me. Well, Mike, we know he's training with Mark Balser down there at Team Samurai X and training with the Cowboy. And if you're training with Shane Holt, he's going to do one of two things. That's either get you tough or get you to quit because that guy <laughs> wants to go hard all the time. And they're going to get her done, John. Get her done. <laughs> <laughs>
A little bit of a lull in the action here, John Rich. Looks like Tudor's trying to hang on just a little bit, just uh, <laughs> holding Jeremy Beckstrom in tight, not really giving him any room to work. But uh, you got to go on the offense a little bit. Yeah, you do, Mike. You got to get into a position where, you know, you're, you're going to land some punches. And even if, hey, stand back up, he wasn't doing a bad job from his feet. If he can't land into a full mount position or a half mount here, hey, let's just stand back up and start this thing over. Maybe get another uh, another uh, takedown or another uh, shot to the chin. Oh, shoot, if I looked as good in those white shorts as he does, I'd stand back <laughs> up too. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be hiding down there just to hide my fat gut. Yeah, no kidding. Would, would be glad for this guy to be on top. But no, <laughs> uh, Tuna Mike, a bodybuilder, he's, he's, he's done some uh, some competitions and stuff. And the kid, he, he, you can tell that he's powerful and he's he's a, been in the weight room. A time Has he done, done any powerlifting as well? Because I mean, he really, he's got a, a bodybuilder's mold, but he's, he's extremely strong. And, and you see the movements that he uses. He looks like a real a power lifter as well. Well, I know that he was training a lot with Zach Barlow. And you remember Zach Barlow, the Russian crush. I think he patented that mover he'd come across. But he was too. They, they, they lived together. They trained. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that they're in there doing power. Well, Zach was the most famous for his uh, waxed eyebrows, I believe. Oh, no. Uh, without a doubt, Mike. Right here, Jer or, uh, Tuna ends the round with a flurry, and that might just have won him some uh, points with the judges. I think he did lose that round based on that one big punch earlier in the round. What do you think? So, too, Mike, that punch almost flattened him out. It was almost reminiscent of uh, the Stephen Sharp Jeff Rutherford fight where he got rocked, and then if Jeremy wouldn't have jumped on him, he might not have woke up. Yeah, yeah exactly. But now he's coming back with a vengeance. Tuna really, whatever energized him in that corner, he has got it going on right now, and Jeremy Beckstrom is eating a lot of leather, Johnny. Well, he went back over there and oh. he's training with Team Elite, and I think they just had a good strategy and just maybe said, hey, don't take the kid, don't, don't take this kid to the ground and don't let him do it to you. This just trade over, shots Johnny. and be aggressive. Whether the ref stopped it or not, already Beckstrom has stopped it. He's done under there, just curling up, and now Lonnie Foster nice is going to step Mike. in nice and say, call. that's enough, and uh, <laughs> Tuna's got to be happy about that. That was a big comeback win. It was, Mike. He was getting rocked. I really was thought Jeremy Beckstrom was going to walk away the victory in this one, but uh, Tuna Hoskins into the second round uh, figures out what he has to do to get one step closer to that championship belt inside the Delta Center. Wow, Chalk one, another one up for the Team Elite. This post-fight interview brought to you by Probe Electric. Let us probe your shorts. Hey, now don't tell me you weren't a little worried in that first round when he landed that big shot. I thought you were out. I definitely thought, you know, that's the first thing through my head. I was like, I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep going. And I did, so. And you did, and you came back. I, you know, your corner had a good game plan for that second round. The first round, you, you looked like you were a little bit more reserved. The second round, you came out just throwing, and you landed the big shots, and, and you got the win. How does that make you feel? Feels good. You know, I love coming in here, getting a big win like that, especially after taking a big shot like that in my face. Well, are you going to go back to New York and, and hang out for a little while, or are you done? Are you going to continue to stay here and fight here and win here? I'm done. I'm staying here, and I'm going to continue to fight. All right, you heard it right there. Nice job tonight, man. You did it. Thanks, man. Gritty performance, Johnny Richie. Rarely do you see a kid lose the first round that badly and come back and win so convincingly. Man, his corner must have lit a fire underneath him because to me, I, I really thought he was, I thought it was over. I thought when he went to the mat right there, he had knocked him out. He was gonna continue to beat on him, but he just came back and he got the win. That was just, that was an incredible fight, Mike. It was a, it was a great, great fight. fight. Yeah, unfortunately, it was a little better for one than the other, yeah. but you know, hey, that was a pretty bad cut on the nose. Yeah, it was a bad cut on the nose, you know, but the doctor reassured us he'd get a couple stitches. He'll be back next round. He'll be back next round to fight in here, Mike. Zip him up, get him back in there, and get him going. Hey, that was a great fight. We got more of the Ultimate Combat. Don't go anywhere. And I'm a little warrior. Hi, I'm the Piranha, Dennis Davis, four-time world champion. I've trained students all over the world, and now I bring my kids' program to the state of Utah. In this program, I'm going to be teaching exercise, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai kickboxing, and wrestling. Along with that is going to be self-esteem, self-respect, and self-discipline. We're going to teach your children safe and effective techniques that have real-life application. MMA is just not training, it's life-changing, and it has made a world of difference in my life. At the UCTC, we are building tomorrow's mixed martial arts superstars. Come join us at the Ultimate Combat Center, Tuesday and Thursday nights at 6 o'clock, ages 6 to 13. Come be Elite Warrior! told you the light heavyweight division is stacked and there are no two bigger names in this game than the maniac Benjamin Fuimano and the vice Hank Weiss Johnny Ritchie I got chills this is exciting before this fight told me this Johnny the reason why I think I'm gonna win this fight is because of fear 
Benjamin Fuimano is the only guy that I've ever not wanted to fight. I don't. I did not want to fight this guy since the day he signed up. Now I have to fight him, and I think my fear is going to be my fire and my fuel this tonight. Well, you know, it can either be your fight and your fuel, or it can work against you because everybody knows what's going to happen here. There's no secrets. No secrets. Ben Fuimano is looking to speed. knock you out. Yeah. And, Hanks. you know, Hank's looking at ankle lock, arm lock, he's looking to go to the ground. So, John and Richie, let's get it going. Get it going it is your main event, light heavyweight, no holds bar. check it out. Well, we've already seen one half of the light heavyweight division. Also, John and Richie with uh, Drew Ellisor coming out victorious. Well, sometimes you be careful what you ask for because the victory is going to make you have to fight one of these guys. One of these guys. Benjamin Fuimano, Mike, what do you say the best? Blap, blap in the business, Best he's got one, it. two in the business, baby. At six foot one, 200 pounds, he's the man. Well, I know that Hank's a very skilled fighter, very good fighter, so it's just a test for me. I'm out, you know, like I said, I'm always up for the challenge, and uh, Hank Weiss is, is, a, is a top challenge for me, so um, I'm, there's, a, there's a bigger stake at hand after if I win, so I'm just trying to get to that, to that point right now. All right, well, this guy right here, Johnny Ritchie, I, I, I take it back. Maniac's the man, but he's the man. <laughs> he is the man. Hank D. Ice Weiss, I love this guy. He's got more nicknames than P. Diddy, but this guy, Mike, can fight it out in the cage and take this thing to the championship if he needs to. Gosh, pretty much the road to this point, to this championship bracket, <laughs> has been just a lot of fights. This is, man, this is like my... 33rd fight, 32nd fight, I don't know exactly how many, but it's over 30, and that's pretty much been my training regimen, is just fighting a lot. My my uh, actual training, conditioning and whatnot have been, you know, on the, on the down low, but uh, mostly just fighting as much as I can, and I don't know, staying alive. You know, I've, I'll be honest, I've, I've dreaded fighting Ben. I've dreaded this night since the first day I seen him in the Ultimate Combat. And that's, I think that's one reason why I'm gonna beat him tonight is because he scares me. Last time I got in the ring here at the Delta Center, I wasn't too nervous about my opponent and he poured it all over me. Ben, uh, he makes me nervous and I think that's gonna, gonna trigger something inside me. We'll see though. Oh yeah, that's good stuff, John and Richie, and I think uh, that's pretty telling there because I've never seen Hank Weiss give an interview that he wasn't cracking jokes yeah, or, yeah. or making fun, and he's serious about this one here. Yeah, this is one where he really knows he has to take it serious, Mike. His last guy, remember, he said he himself, he looked past, and the guy and the guy really poured it on him, and, and to be Benjamin Fuimano, he's going to have to be focused, composed, and stick to his game plan. <laughs> Yeah, that's his game plan right, right there, there, Johnny. Shoot and shoot low, because you don't want to catch one on the way in. Ben Fumano knows you're going to shoot in on him. He's going to try to throw that one-two on your way in, but that's what you need to shoot at the ankles, and just missing right there was Hank Weiss. Well, what, what an exciting thing about talking to Ben, too, Mike, was he knew that Hank was going to do this. I mean, come on, it's Hank Weiss. And he said he practiced he practiced his takedown defense. He practiced how to sprawl. He practiced how to use his hips and to get out of a position where normally Hank controls it in and does exactly what he's doing right uh, now. Johnny, he may have practiced, but he didn't practice again the level of competition that he's here uh, against right here. Hank Weiss is as good as it gets at what he's doing right there. He shot in, shot low, secured the takedown. Now, uh, Benjamin Fumano, this is not where he wants to be. This is no. not where he wanted to fight Hank Weiss. Well, Mike, this is why one of this fight was either going to be really super exciting or over really quick on, on either end. You know, Hank Weiss could end this thing with a submission faster. Ben could really get a knockout, and you know Ben does not want to be well, in this position. He's got, wow, Benjamin Fumano was able to reverse uh, Hank Weiss there, which really surprised me, but he's left himself in a bit of a quandary as uh, he's probably going to take a little nap here in a minute. <laughs> you see the triangle choke being inched on there, and, and uh, Hank Weiss is as good as they get at this. Well, Mike, when Hank Weiss puts a submission on, it's not, it's never half-assed. It's always to the core, and, and it's always technical and right. I mean, there's probably not too much wrong about what he's doing right there. He, well, he just he, throws it on, and it's done, and that's the fight. That's, that's a very anticlimactic finish to a fight that I really was excited to see, you know, Ben Fulmano's pretty disappointed, but I guarantee you he's going to, he's not going to be too disappointed because he lost to a kid that he yeah. has very high regard for. Well, they both do, Mike. It's good to see that Hank Weiss gets the win. I mean, Benjamin Fulmano, my heart goes out to this kid, but Hank Weiss has been here. You heard him say he has over 30 fights and he really wants that championship. Moving on to the Delta Center, baby. This post-fight interview brought to you by our good friends at Great Clips. Go to ultimatecombat.com for participating locations.
Ben, ben that was a tough one because you were in it. And um, what are you thinking right now? Uh, what I think about it, it should have went better than it did. But uh, it went good for him. Yeah, he's tough on the ground, man. I uh, exposed my neck, and he just wrapped his leg around, man. Uh, you know, and, and right off the bat, he shot in and almost got that ankle and took you down, too. You just can't. Like you said, you cannot give him anything because he'll capitalize. Tonight, you were good, just not good enough. You lost to a tough, tough kid, though. Thanks for fighting tonight, man. I think my heart went soft because we're both, we're both the same fate, so that's what I was thinking about. But, uh, hey, good job, Hank. Come back and do it again, man. This post-fight interview brought to you by Got Your Back Realty. Give Gary McDonald a call at 809-GARY or check him out online at www.igotyourbackrealty.com. How, how does it feel to overcome that fear, Hank? Oh, my gosh. Such a relief. And, you know, the, all I could think about when we were dancing around is Thursday night, I had a big turkey in front of me, and I had to eat a little piece of it so I could make weight. And it, the way I saw it, it was Ben's fault. It was Ben's fault. So, and so that's when you took your anger out because you didn't played, get that. Though. Yeah, that played a part. And I, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I went for my low single and I just, I just imagined it was a great big turkey and leg. And a big, great big turkey leg and you snagged it and you ate it and you got the victory, Hank Weiss. We're so proud of you here, man. We can't wait to see you move on and get that, you know, maybe try for that championship belt. Right. What do you think your odds are, Hank? Um, they're, I don't think anyone could beat me. Oh, you heard it right there, Hank. Nice job. See you later. All right, well, let's talk about next week a little wow. bit. Next wow. week is the finals of the semifinals. Next week, we answer all the questions. Who is going to be at the Delta Center fighting for the belt? Well, it's going to be just as exciting a night as this night was. Many main event fights tonight on the card. We just had to draw it out, and, and, and that's the way that it goes. we got tough guys fighting next week, and we're going to see who has what it takes to get to the Delta Center and win that belt, Mike. Next, I, I'm already excited about it. Right, We're gonna have a hard time topping this round because it's yeah, so, good. so good. You definitely want to tune in next week for the finals and the semifinals of round 18, the round of champions. Hey, it's the Ultimate Combat Experience. Johnny Ritchie, Mike, Mike Stidham, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next week.